Next month, some of the biggest names in investing will present their best ideas at the 24th annual Irisone Investment Conference in New York City. This year's lineup includes Jeffrey Gundlach, David Einhorn, Larry Robbins, many more big names, many familiar to you. We, of course, will be there covering it all as the exclusive broadcast partner. All proceeds from that conference go towards the fight against pediatric cancer. Here with a look at what to expect from this year's event is Evan Sohn. He is one of the founders of the Sohn Conference. He is also the brother of the late Ira Sohn, for whom the conference is named. We are also joined today by Andrew Walker. He won the Sohn Investment Idea Contest last year. It's good to have you both with us. Thanks for having us. Again, another year. Good to see you, Scott. I love this event. Um, Thank you. We look forward to it every year. We are proud to be associated with it, and I can't wait to be there broadcasting live. Well, we love to have you there. Uh, we love our continued partnership with CNBC, and it's probably the most diverse group we've had of speakers in years. Uh, we've got uh, Dan Sundheim and Gabe Plotkin, two of the best performing hedge funds, being interviewed by our conference chair, Graham Duncan. Uh, we've got uh, Patrick Collison, uh, co founder, CEO of one of the hottest fintech companies, Stripe, being interviewed by Michael Moritz of Sequoia. And from what my uh, conference chairs tell me, the lineup of all the other newcomers are just the best that we've had in years. No, we are. Uh we're proud to be associated with something so important. Thanks. $85 million, by the way, has been raised over the past 20 years. I mean, most importantly, that's what this is about. It's about bringing people together. Yes, you get your best idea from some of the best money managers around, but it's also about raising money for something that means so much to you. Uh, absolutely. Um, you come back year after year for the content and for the networking, but the money all goes to fight pediatric cancer and other childhood diseases. And we couldn't be more proud to be part of a partnership with CNBC. All right, Andrew, good to have you here. Uh, your your idea was Long La Quinta. Yep, it was Long La Quinta. Uh, in the, they were going to sell their business to Wyndham and then spin off their hotels. Which, which they, in fact, did. Um, why did you, why'd you like it then? You know, we liked it because it was this, you were creating the spun off hotels for one of the cheapest multiples in the hotel space. And over time, we thought La Quinta getting integrated into the Wyndham system would be great for their hotels as they started to get all the Wyndham Rewards members and onto the Wyndham business platform. We thought it could improve occupancy and drive EBITDA up. So they, they did the acquisition in May of, of 2018, yep, so the, right around the, the time of the conference. Right after we presented it, the acquisition closed, they spun off the shares and we got our cash back for the La Quinta brand. Uh, interesting. What about the sector in general? In terms of hotel REITs, this one over any other one? Yeah, so we like this one because, you know, it's trading at nine times EBITDA, six or seven times AFFO. So it's by far the cheapest, uh, by far the cheapest hotel REIT out there. Most peers are trading at 11 or 12 times. So you create it really cheaply. And we think they've got a clear path to growing earnings over the next one or two years as those synergies kick in. You're with Rangely Capital? That's right. Give us an idea of what kind of portfolio you run. Yeah, so we run uh, two portfolios. One of them's an event driven. That's the fund that my partner, Chris the Muth, founded about 10 years ago. And then I run a concentrated value and special situation focused portfolio. Okay, so give me some of your, your largest positions within that then. Absolutely, so by far our two largest positions it's a concentrated portfolio making up about 50% of the portfolio. Our charter, the second largest cable, cable company in the U.S., and then our other is MSG, which owns the Knicks and the Rangers uh, and is about to spin off the Knicks and the Rangers, and there'll be two companies, a sports team and then an entertainment side. So, Andrew, you and I were talking about mm -hmm. MSG, but I actually want to ask you about charter. Uh, do they do something to buy content? I mean, doesn't everybody who's in distribution now have to buy content? You know, I don't think they, I don't think they need to. So the, the big takeaway from Charter is everybody looks at them and thinks this video business and there's cord cutting and there's this thing. And the, John Malone, who's their, who's their largest shareholder, he named his tracking stock Liberty Broadband. The key to Charter is it's a broadband play. And whether they have video or people just go get Netflix and they subscribe to their internet, we think that's the play. And let's talk about MSG for a second. Mm -hmm. This is some restructuring here, right? We're going to spin out the Knicks and uh, the Rangers. Yep. Um, there, you know, you look at net asset value of MSG and you see the value there, but people who've been in it say, what about the taxes if you actually sell the Knicks and Rangers? Then isn't it at fair value, MSG? So, Have you thought about that? Yeah, so even with the taxes, we think you're buying it for a discount to the sum of their parts. They've got tons of assets. They've got a billion in cash. They own MSG Arena. But with the spinoff, they'll be able to sell those teams tax-free if somebody comes and buys them both All right, together. let me ask you one more, because this is actually a really interesting name. I MSG. Go for it. MSG, they got to they move the garden in 10 years, right? 
right? Isn't there this tussle with the city of New York? Doesn't that cost a ton of money? So they've been tussling for a long time, but they actually own the arena, and I think they're in a good place to negotiate with the city. They own the air rights over MSG. If the city ever wants to do something with okay. Penn Station, they're going to have to pay MSG and give them something. So I can see why you like this. Part. There's a lot of moving parts there, and analysts like you can sink your teeth in. Give me something it. on IAC, which we don't talk about all that often on this program, but is one of your largest positions. <laughs> you caught me. Yeah, so IAC is actually a third largest position. They're the controlling shareholder of Match.com and Angie's List. And when you buy IAC, you get it access to Match.com and Angie's List for about fair price, and then you get all of their other assets for free. And we've got great respect for the IAC management team. You can look at their history and what they've done. They've created tons of value, and we think getting all of their other assets for free is a fantastic opportunity. Yeah, you're seeing these stocks move as we're talking about them. Liberty Broadband? Liberty Broadband, that's our play on Charter. It's John Malone's tracking stock. You can buy Liberty Broadband and get Charter at about a 10% discount, and we're very bullish on both the tracking stock and Charter. Evan, give us the details on how to get involved with the idea contest. So the uh, Sone Idea Contest sponsored by GLG, I think the deadline is tomorrow. And by the way, IAC, stock pick from a couple of years ago uh, at the uh, Sone Conference. Remember that one? Yeah. So you can get involved up until tomorrow is the deadline? Tomorrow is the yes, deadline. Yes, April 18th at 12 p.m. Eastern time. The idea judges... Ackman's the lead judge, Eileen Appman, Einhorn, Joel Greenblatt, who was just on the network the other day, Seth Klarman, Larry Robbins. Good stuff. We'll look forward to seeing you out there. Look forward to having you there.